uh, when you get married, you become as I don't have my glasses on. When you get married, you become as one separate bank account. Make no sense. It's okay to have accounts for your personal allowance. However, you should come as one. Oh, somebody had asked a question earlier about what are our thoughts on separate bank accounts? And I wanted to circle back to that, but we went on another trail. Here's what I would say is that it's not so much about the separate bank accounts as it is about the transparency, because what works for our family may not work for your family. And, and I've seen it work both ways. The problems come in when people don't know what's going on in the backyards of their spouse's finances. And that's the issue. What are we keeping secrets for? Why don't I know how much you earn? Why don't I know how much you've saved? Why don't I know how much you're spending? Why is this a secret kept from your spouse? I think that's the big problem. So pause. Yes, sir. Do you know how many couples literally do not know how much their spouse makes? Yes. They've never seen a check. They've never seen a pay stub. They haven't seen anything. You would think if we can share bodies, we can share bank accounts. So we put more value on our money than we do our bodies. Like that is the sacred thing. That is the thing that can't be disclosed and be shared and be shared with your spouse. That is insanity. There's a book entitled One Bedroom, One Bank Account, not in terms of just having one specific bank account, but it's about to Daniel's point. We have a few bank accounts, but guess what? Daniel's name is on every single one of them. My name is on every single one of them. She has access to them. I have access to them. We have conversations. What's in this account? What's in that account? Because we're one, we're married. And so listen, now listen, there's all types of complexities involved by why people do what they do. And that's what we counsel people through in terms of their finances to get them on the same page because it's about financial alignment in that relationship. And so that's where some personal growth has to take place as well because some people aren't necessarily good with finances. Mm -hmm. Some people will take that uh, rent money or that mortgage money and go shopping. So that's you true. have to set up systems Sorry, that sometimes protect you from yourself but in essence, you should not be living a life where you're completely financially separate because you're living a Dutch life. Yeah. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? You live in a, we go half on bills, we go half on kids, we go half on everything. Like and that's it's, insanity. It's simply put, it's financial infidelity because now your, your unfaithfulness is all about the finances. I don't know what you're spending. I don't know what our future looks like. I don't know what we've established because you won't tell me. So again, have all the accounts you want. Just make sure that it's transparent and that it's open and that at any moment you can log on in and see what's going on. And there's just no secrets. That's what it's about. Transparency. You know what? When you live a separate financial life, it puts you in such a horrible, vulnerable position in your relationship and makes matters worse. Like at the end of the day, stop doing it. Stop doing it. You're yes. not rewarding yourself. You're punishing yourself. And these are the things that you got to be, mind, be mindful of right. if you want to take your relationship to the next level. Yes, Does sir. that make sense? Yes. Congratulations. You played yourself. And that's what you're doing. <laughs> you are playing yourself every single time that you want to live a secular life. I, I think I need to hear that again. Do it again, because I don't think they caught, quite caught that. You played yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you played yourself. You played yourself. So listen, guys, I hope you, we have one more question before we go. Uh, my husband doesn't know how much I make because he's terrible with finances and he like go in our joint account and spend whatever. And then I have to go into my personal account to cover the household. And see, this is what I'm talking about. Problem. This yeah. is where personal growth and development yep. happens in the area That's of your finances. Right. So, right. so there's a way that you can see, listen, if you need to keep your spouse from that account because he's proven himself or she has proven herself to be irresponsible, that makes sense. They don't need to be on that account so they don't have access. They can't do that. But there should still be a working knowledge that both of you have because you have bills, you, you have plenty. What we have found is that when couples live separate lives financially, they're not able to accomplish goals that they that they would if they were both on the same page. He has his goals. She has her goals. He has his savings. She has her savings. He has his investments. She has her investments. And so when it comes time to say purchasing a home, when it comes time to say making an investment, a lot of times they're not able to reach the full potential of their partnership, tapping into the power of their partnership because they are so disconnected financially. There's power in the unity of your relationship and two are better than one. And so when two people come together in unison, in perfect agreement and harmony, that's the power of the marriage mastermind to accomplish together what you could not accomplish on your own.